Hi there, I'm Frederick, creative lead on Amnesia the Bunker. I want to take you through a few of the key aspects of the game in a small video series that we're doing here leading up to the release on the 6th of June. This game will not hold your hand, that's for sure. It's uh, a challenging game, it focuses on experimentation and requires the player to do all of the hard work, figuring out what to do next and how to best do it based off of what you've got in your inventory and what you've found throughout the game. It also comes down to you experimenting with the resources, crafting them, if you believe something is possible to do, if you believe fuel to be uh, something that can burn, then try it out, pour it on the floor, set fire to it. Those kind of immersive sim aspects of the game is there and, and we really hope that people will kind of go away from the hoarding aspect of, of uh, maybe how they used to play games previously, trying to gather and protect as much as possible out of the resources. Here it's more of a finding a balance, not wasting of course all of your resources, but experimenting, trying out and seeing where it takes you. We hope that this really keeps the player immersed and engaged with the game throughout the full playthrough. Um, we're super hyped about seeing how people will take on the different challenges in this game. Now, let's talk difficulty. The Bunker is a challenging game. It's not going to hold your hand. So uh, this means that certain players with certain skills, with certain play styles, will find it more difficult than others. They might take their time, sneak through environments, more like, uh, likely to take, burn more fuel from the generator, etc. So, we realized that early on we want to make this uh, game approachable by most player types and not alienate anyone. Uh, therefore, we've gone with three different difficulty modes on release. It's the easy mode. Easy mode is generator will burn longer, fuel will last longer, you will find more resources, uh, the monster is not as aggressive as in other modes, uh, even to the point where we actually have different uh, additional save lamps out in the subsections of this uh, of the bunker, meaning that those that are having a hard time playing it in normal or hard mode can play it on easy mode and therefore have a, an easier time. Normal mode is a more balanced mode, but it's important to understand that you'll likely die more than once through a normal play mode. It's, it's, um, it's what we recommend though, as a starting level. Um, it has kind of the balanced setup uh, in somewhere in between hard and easy mode. Then of course, hard mode, something that we in the team also have fallen in love with. We know the game, we understand the game now, and playing it like on hard mode, realizing that resources are limited, we really need to be experimental and, and creative with how we use them. It's, it's uh, such a fun experience, but might be tough to, to start with the hard mode and, and start with a normal mode is probably the way to go and the recommendation we, we will probably make for everyone. After this, upon, like, after the release, we even plan to have more of this added to the game. We, we have a, a, a planned post-launch patch with actually two different modes, uh, like a, a even harder shell-shocked mode and a, and a custom mode where you can actually fine-tune your settings to your liking. Let's talk replayability. In Amnesia the Bunker, it's something we put a lot of effort into, trying to make the game fun to play more than one time. And we're super happy with where we're taking it with this game. Um, 
it all starts with the monster, the dynamic monster. It's basically, there's basically no scripting uh, related to the monster, not related to the rest of the game either, but especially with the monster. And that kind of lays the groundwork for how unique and different situations emerge uh, through a, uh, throughout the playthrough. Uh, for example, the monster does not react to our scripts, but rather reacts to the player's actions. So if you use the noisy flashlight too much, or if you throw a grenade to, to blow up a door, or you trigger a trap, all of these things could lead to the monster emerging in a specific place or in a different place at a different time. So it's all very, very dynamic. And adding to this the, the implementation of the randomization that we've done. But for example, we've we got randomized resources. So if you go into a room during one playthrough, you might find one of these valuable uh, pocket bags that give you an extra inventory slot. Or next time you might not find anything or, or something less useful to you. Um, the traps are random, like the, the, the location and the so type of trap. The explosive barrels are randomly placed. So the gas barrels and all of this, and it just creates certain triggers that could, uh, could create situations where you need to find a th uh, fight a threat in a specific area or th in a very unique situation every time. The codes to the lockers, they are random, all of them, the numbers are random, so you can't really get ask someone else for a, for a code. Uh, where the dog tags are located, that's also very much random, so everything is distributed randomly in the beginning of the playthrough, so you might, one playthrough, you might find the lighter or the gas mask very early on, for example, uh, which, of course, if you have the gas mask, you gas grenades and stuff like that become more of a tool for you since you can walk through the gas yourself. So all of this changes the way the game evolves for you every playthrough. So all of this together makes for a very like unique uh, environment every time, unique setup, unique prerequisites for the player and the tools that you have. So. Uh, hopefully this will make the game fun to play over and over and over.